Hi, this is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at Caveco Summer Purple. I'll do a writing sample on 52 GSM Tomoe River paper using a variety of pens and nib sizes. I'll take a look at writing samples that I did earlier on other types of paper. I'll compare Caveco Summer Purple to similar inks from my collection. And finally, I'll take a look at the results of my water resistance test. Caveco Summer Purple was a joy to write with using a glass dip nib. It made a nice uniform line. On the initial scribble, you can see it came off a bit heavier at the beginning, but then it became very uniform quickly after that. The swatch that I made with tweezers goes gradually from a deep dark purple to a, a nice medium purple. The drip at the end of the swatch is pretty uniformly dark. There's a very slight halo maybe that you can see. There's no sheen though. You can see a bit of a halo in this heavy part of the swatch. The shading is fairly subtle, but still noticeable. I'm going to begin with my Pilot Kakuno. It has an extra fine stainless steel nib. This is very smooth, especially for this Pilot Extra Fine. Very enjoyable to write with. I could see myself using this with, especially with like a, a Hobonichi planner. It puts down a nice, very legible line and just very enjoyable to write with. Next, I've got my Caveco AL Sport. It has a fine stainless steel nib. This particular replacement nib writes kind of dry, and if I remember correctly, I have an extra fine steel replacement nib that writes wetter than this fine nib. Now, on some of the papers that I did writing samples on, it felt kind of dry, but this, on this Tomoe River paper, it is nice and smooth. Now, at least to my eye, it looks like the line looks a, a bit brighter. You're seeing more of the, the pale shades of the ink than these darker ones. The Kakuno seems a little darker, but this is still, still very attractive. It doesn't look washed out. Sometimes when I'm using an ink that I know should be darker and it comes across as lighter, it, it takes away from the writing experience, but I'm not feeling that with this ink and nib combination, at least on this paper. Next, I've got my Sailor 1911 Standard. It has a 14 karat medium nib. Sailor nibs are known for their feedback, and I can slightly hear the feedback of this nib on the paper, but I didn't really feel it. It felt very pleasant, and I'm going to call this, well, I feel a little bit of the feedback, but still on this paper, very smooth. Next, I've got my Caveco Parqueo.
It has a stainless steel medium nib. To me, this nib, this medium nib on the Perkeo is known for its chalky feeling characteristic on paper. But just like with the Sailor nib, I could hear the feedback this time, but I didn't really feel it. Just the, probably the slightest amount of feedback. It didn't, these two nibs did not feel glassy smooth, but... Just the, a hint of feedback, but I would still characterize this as smooth. And I'm just liking the way the ink looks in all of these nibs. Next, I've got a Fully One 017. I've replaced the stock Fully Win nib with a Nimasign 0.6 stub nib. This was glassy smooth. You can see it's not quite as wet as the two medium nibs, but the the look of the ink is not suffering. Uh, sometimes with these stub nibs, since the ink is spread out thinner, it will look like a completely different ink. It'll look pale and washed out, but not in this case. All of these inks from the wetter nibs to the drier nibs, the color is still intact. Next, I'll be writing with my Caveco Lily Put. It has a stainless steel broad nib. I guess the best way to describe this is buttery smooth. It's not glassy smooth. Sometimes uh, glassy smooth can be unpleasant because you don't feel like you have the control. It feels like you're just going to slide off the page. Uh, I would characterize this as buttery smooth and very enjoyable. And finally, I'll be writing with my Jin Hao X750. It has a 1.5 stainless steel stub nib. This ink and nib combination is just very luxurious. To write with. It's very smooth. It just the, the ink on the page is very rich, very attractive, very pleasant writing experience. Okay, while this dries, I'll take a look at some of the other writing samples. On the writing sample that I did on Rhodia paper, I had a little trouble here in the middle with the ink wanting to hold on to the paper. That may have been an error with me because nowhere else, including the glass dip nib, did I have any trouble with the ink wanting to grab the paper. In fact, all of these writing samples that I do, unless I note otherwise, I you can see there's no converter in here. I just dip the nib in ink and do the writing samples. Well... I dipped all my pens in ink, did several writing samples on different types of paper, but I didn't have time to film this part of the test. And so my inks had to sit up here on my desk um, till the next day. And I came back and did another writing sample. And again, I didn't have time to film my test. And so 
on that day, after I did that writing sample, I dipped them again. And then I came back more than 24 hours later to do this. I didn't test the pens before I began that writing sample on the Tomoe River paper. And the pens just wrote flawlessly. I've just got a little bit of ink in the feed from dipping it. And on that Tomoe River writing samples, there were no hard starts, nothing that ever even felt like a, a little dryness at the beginning. This is a nice ink. It's not very common that I can do these dip tests and come back hours later and not have any hard starts. And I'm loving the performance of this ink in each nib size on a variety of papers. I've had people tell me that this is their all-time favorite ink, and I can see why. It hasn't been very long ago that I've been using Caveco Palm Green, and ah, I just love the way that ink performs in the nib. And this has a very similar performance, a very just a richness and a smoothness on the paper. This might be my new favorite purple ink. I have a note here that this Caveco Fine Nib was a little bit dry, and you can see that compared to these previous inks. It's kind of on par with this Extra Fine, that Pilot Extra Fine, but this nib is kind of known for running a bit dry. I think I'm needing to open the tines a little bit because the extra fine nib just felt really nice. Now, copy paper is not my favorite paper to write on with fountain pens. This was very acceptable. A little bit, I don't know if I can zoom in close enough, just a little bit of, I don't know if I would, I wouldn't really call it feathering, more like, and it's not really even spreading. The edges of the letters just look ever so slightly ragged, but the pins were each very smooth. The Sailor had a little bit of feedback, but it was a very pleasant feedback. The Caveco was the only one that felt maybe a little dry, but it was still okay to write with, and the Kakuno felt nice. Now, this is not really trash copy paper. This copy paper is fairly thick, and it did bleed through a bit, but copy paper is not something you're typically going to write on both sides of the page with if you're using fountain pens. The writing sample that I did in my old Voyage Term bullet journal was very enjoyable. Looks very nice. You really uh, especially when you write with a really broad nib like this 1.5 stub, you see that halo effect. I don't know. It's kind of late in the evening. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on, there on the K. And there's a little bit of shading that you see. No sheen with this ink, though. Caveco Summer Purple is the kind of purple that I tend to gravitate to. It's not too bright. It just looks very rich. It's similar to Monteverde Rose Noir. Rose Noir has just ever so slightly more dustiness to it, duskiness maybe even, but... I prefer the Summer Purple because it has a little more water resistance. We'll see in a moment. Erbon Poussière de Lune has been my go-to favorite purple ink. You can see it's a bit darker. Caveco's Summer Purple looks a bit brighter when you compare it to Poussière de Lune. Both of these do have a little bit of water resistance or they have a water resistant component. Ferris Will Press Grape Ice Pop is kind of similar to Poussière de Lune. It's a bit darker. It makes Summer Purple look a little bit brighter. But Grace, Grape Ice Pop doesn't really have any water resistance. 
Diatromentous aubergine has a similar water-resistant component to summer purple, but aubergine is a bit darker and it has a little bit of sheen. A recent ink that I looked at was Waringal Jane Eyre, and it's a similar dusky kind of purple, but very uh, or much less saturated. And this ink was very finicky when it came to what kind of a pen or nib it would perform well in. Really, the Pilot Grant's 14 karat medium was the only nib that I enjoyed it in, whereas. Caveco Summer Purple, The World is Your Oyster, any nib, size, wetness, or dryness seems to perform really well with this ink. When I first got into fountain pens, I thought inks like Murasaki Shikibu, kind of pretty pastel kind of inks would be the ones that I like, and where Whereas Murasaki Shikibu performs really well in a variety of pens and nib sizes, I find that for writing, this kind of a more bright color or maybe even more pastel y color isn't always my favorite. However, one pen that I do enjoy this ink in is this Fully Win. It looks really nice with the purple swirls. And the purple swirls have some lighter areas and darker areas. And the lighter areas kind of look like Murasaki Shikibu. But the darker areas look kind of like summer purple. So really either one of these inks is nice to use, especially with this... Um, kind of narrow stub nib, this Nemesine stub nib. In this pen, it tends to be a pretty wet writer, and both of these inks I enjoy when they're laid down really heavily on the page. And like Caveco Palm Green, Caveco Summer Purple has this dark gray or black water-resistant component that just gives me peace of mind when I'm writing. I don't really write stuff that I should be overly concerned about preserving. Mostly it's just note-taking and checklists and um, a little bit of journaling. Nothing super important, but I just like the peace of mind that I have with the ink with this amount of water resistance. This is a little sample, writing sample, done on rhodia paper, and I submerged it in water for 10 minutes. All right. I absolutely love this purple. I, I loved the writing samples that I did with palm green, and I'm looking forward to trying some of the other Caveco inks. I like the very subtle shading that you get with some nibs. Some nibs, you can very faintly see that the, the kind of halo effect that you get. If you have like a, a medium or a broader nib, you can kind of slightly see that halo. And it just gives your, your writing some character. It doesn't look like you know, a flat, you know, writing with a magic marker. No bleed through on this thin Tomoe River paper. A little bit of show through, but mm, a, little, a little bit of bleed at this drip here at the end. Now this drip, normally I do a swipe with my tweezers and then just pick it up, and it'll leave a little drip at the end. Well, this one didn't, and I thought that was a little bit boring, so I made a little drip at the end, and so it's probably a little bit heavier, have more ink than, you know, I typically get there. Even on that really heavy writing that I did with the glass dip nib, it's showing through, but didn't bleed through the paper.
If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.